Okay, here we are. It's day 13 of Advent of Code 2019. Some folks say it's haunted, but haunted or not, there's about 30 seconds left before this problem goes live, and I'm going to take a shot at solving it. I'm Bart Massey, and welcome to my fine YouTube series uh, solving parts of some of the days of Advent of Code. This is the URL here on the screen of my GitHub repository, which you can go check out the code, or at least some later cleaned up version of it, that we write tonight. So let's see what we got. I think we should be up. We are in fact up. As you ponder the solitude of space and the ever-increasing three-hour round trip, you blah, mail indicator light, care package, arcade cabinet, exciting. The arcade cabinet runs it code software. Oh yay, this is just the year of it code. Primitive screen, square tiles on a grid. Every three output instructions specify X, Y, and tile ID. And zero is an empty tile, one is a wall, two is a block, three is a paddle, and four is a ball. Hmm, I wonder which game we're going to be playing today. If only I could imagine. Start the game. How many block tiles are on the screen when the game exits? In other words, make sure that you can actually run the problem. Well, this looks an awful lot like the day before yesterday's start of big adventure so we'll probably just go ahead and copy that code over and off we'll go um how many block tiles are on the screen when the game exits okay this is just really warm up -y. okay fine that's not good that means the second part's going to be a complete adventure but there we are uh -huh. all right let's borrow liberally from day 11 solution um Okay, yep, this is the kind of thing I thought we probably needed. So, let's grab our map types and grab a thing, and this code may end up moving into libaoc at some point, but for now we'll just go with it. And we'll int code read and then we'll count the number of block tiles on map. That should be easy. Let map equals paint program. I don't really need the extra argument yet. Um, and in this case, uh, let n blocks equals map. dot count dot iter dot filter now we got to be careful because there's this ampersand ampersand thing here and Rust doesn't really handle it the right way so we'll be a little careful here um, dot values I guess and what was the enum here? Two. So X is a terrible name. T, they're tiles. Okay, so it should be just as simple as doing that and then hacking this up the tiniest, tiniest bit. Uh, we don't need all the facing stuff anymore because we're not doing facings this week, but we are. And we don't need position to be immutable anything. And now we're just going to play copy and paste magic. X, Y, tile ID. All right. 
let's do the obvious thing here. Um, it's time to build the function I should have built on day 11. Build this loop. But without the silly let and indented by four. I feel like I'm in a race here. This leaderboard thing is not my favorite thing. Um, right. None. And let's return some Q in this case. And that should be all she wrote for that. Um, now we should just be able to call the obvious thing. And off we go. And I'm going to assume that it halts only when it's about to paint the next thing. Draws tiles with output instructions. So it's just, there's no input to be provided. It. So now we've got the X, um, the Y is easier. Dot expect, um, unexpected halt in Y. And T is gonna be the same thing. And map dot insert x comma y comma t. And that should be the whole story here. Let's see if this builds. There's no tests I can run, so there's that. Oh, I forgot to put a format string on the print line. I forgot to put a thing on the print line in blocks. Really? Okay. Forgot to use the hash map type. Standard collections hash map. Cannot find point. Use AOC point. Oh, forget it. Have output. Paint still doesn't packed up to get rid of default color, which wasn't being used anyway. You'd think I knew how to program until you watch this, then you'd be like, oh. Why is paint even there? Oh, this is the thing I'm running. What is it complaining about now? Line 43. Oh. Right, this is the thing I said was going to happen, and then it did. Who knew? 
need to get our input still. I know there's a million automated ways to do this, but I'm old school and just want to get my puzzle input by copying and pasting. Maybe that's lame, but if so, you can call me lame. Okay. That's wrong. Um, there we go. I think three hundred twenty six it says. It says there's three hundred twenty six blocks of the right type. Do I believe that? I don't know. How would I know? Um let's say there's three hundred twenty six. Submit. Yay! That is literally the fastest I've ever solved one this year, and that was easy. The game doesn't run because you didn't put any quarters in. Whoa. Okay. I'm supposed to stick some quarters in memory address zero two by default that's actually doable I have some ghetto thing for that from leftover from like day two or whatever it was the day three whenever it was we started in code and then we have to actually build the player I was afraid of this I was afraid of this what is your score after the last block is broken? I'm gonna just go out on a limb and say that this breakout game, I was wrong, I thought it was gonna be Pong. I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say that this breakout game doesn't have the normal scoring. I'm just gonna say that. Okay. New score to show in the segment display. So we literally have to track this around, track the ball around on the map, and keep hitting it up until, and yeah, visualizing this would be really super helpful. Do I want to build a visualizer before I start? Yeah, probably. I've got all this fancy map printing code in libaoc already that only needs to be juiced up a little bit to print the map. And I can always print an ANSI escape code to make the display look pretty. So now for part two, so the question is, let's look at part one again super carefully. Zero is an empty tile. So the question is, does it do incremental update or does it do um, repaint at every step? I'm going to guess incremental update. Maybe not. I don't know. I just don't know. I am super confused how I do this. If I put in quarters, I'm super confused. The ball moves diagonally and bounces off objects. Okay, there's a paddle tile and a ball tile. All right, 
let's see what this thing is doing. I think we're gonna have to do some exploratory programming to understand this. The other alternative would be to reverse engineer it, and I don't have that kind of time. So let's actually clean this up just a little bit. Um, enum. Let's get our tile enum going. Tile. And the options in order are empty wall block paddle ball. And I probably should just specify the tile numbers, but I don't think so. And let's derive the usual stuff for enums that you wish was derived by default, kind of. Um, clone, copy, partial, eek, comma, eek. Those are all things that are useful for the tile enum. zero yeah let's just do it it matters now I got myself a nice enum for these things all right const render Oh, forget it. Tile semicolon five equals, and the fact that you have to hand count that just drives me nuts, but there's nothing I can do about it. And so for empty, we'll have a space. Oh, that should be char anyway. Space, a wall. I mean, who knows, right? Plus, I guess, because it could go either way. A block should be um, pound, clearly. The paddle should clearly be an underbar. And the ball, well, there's only one choice for the ball. There we are. We've chosen some characters for rendering. So I think we're committed now. We now have to go down the road. Um, Phone render self returns a char and I sort of feel like I can just bury this in here for now and I really could have just used the let then and I wouldn't have had to count but oh well so um Render sub self as u size should get me everything I need to know. So now I have a way to render a tile. Now my paint program just produces a map. I'm not sure this is actually even the program I want. Right. <sighs> So I loop doing a grab coordinates. Right. right. So we're going to get rid of this whole loop body here pretty much. Dang it. I can't use my editor anymore. Option. Let's 
put this in there. No, except it's not. It's going to be get this. I don't know. It's a terrible name. I don't care. There we go. And that thing up there is known as a point at this point. And I've got a parentheses problem. Um, there we are. So now I've broken that out, and this loop now becomes a while let some position comma t equals get disp and mute prog. And really, these could be methods of prog, but that doesn't really work because it's in a separate crate, and I just don't care that much. Um, now the other interesting way of looking at that is that we almost have an iterator so we can absolutely implement iterator and into iterator on this but I feel like that's not going to be useful and it's going to be a huge amount of time so we're not going to okay Hey, I believe that my program is back to where I started, and that if I run it now, I should still get the same answer. Let's find out. One parameter, but two parameters were supplied. Some x, y, t. Oh, right. I know. I'm not tupled up fully. Return the whole mess of stuff. And mismatch types, option, point, comma, I64. Oh, and get this, yeah. Expected one field, found two. Oh, yeah, well, that makes sense because I'm still not tupled up right. Cannot bra or prog is mutable since it's not declared as mutable. Well, yeah, you're right, it isn't. What? Where? Cannot borrow prog is mutable. Let's see that again, please. Line 39. Oh. Woohoo! All of those and mutes don't need to be and mutes anymore. But when I call get disk. I need it. Warning variant is never constructed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. None of that is ever used. I don't care. Hey, we're back to where we started, but now we have a little bit better machinery. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Um Render a map to the screen. Now, the easiest way is going to do this is going to be to fix up. I meant to do this before tonight. I'm going to do it tonight. Okay. Remind yourself we're still on part two and it's not that long into it. Um. 
So we'll go back and fix the previous day's letter. I don't think I care very much. So let's extend render. to take a mapping function. Oh, I see. No, I don't actually see. All right, so we're pretty clearly beyond what we can do in one line here. So let's wrap everything around. Um. Fun mute I sixty four char Oh I see. The problem is it takes a hash set, not a hash map. Maybe I should undo this and build the hash mapper. Crap, crap, crap. Yep. There are times when you just have to start over. Um, Let's fix this hash set and a hash map. And we're just gonna copy paste for now again because we're completely insane. Render a hash map. Resulting string will have characters at coordinate locations represented in the map. As defined by the rendering function. Okay, now let's try again. We'll get our map. Yeah, we'll just leave the other stuff. Um, we'll leave the other stuff alone. <sighs> Fun mute. I-64 arrow. Car. There we go. So we're going to play the same game we played here. Um, um, and the default character elsewhere. Right, so we need to know what we're going to do with the spaces. Um, so it's going to take three arguments. That default is a char. There we go. We're going to render like this. Like this, I tell you. Um, and this needs to change from being a hash set map there we go so we can say result dot push
let ch equals map dot get and x comma y dot unwrap or else no just unwrap or is fine I don't care um, default there we go and uh, No. There we go. Let's not get too clever here. Um Render T none default. Yeah, there's a, probably some fancy combinator thing I could do here. But why? Why? I know exactly what I want. And then I'm going to result.pushch. There we go. So this is a new public function called render map. It takes a map instead of a set and it prints the thing. Let's see what happens here. <sighs> yeah, and that's not gonna be okay, I imagine, because it's not sized right. So we're supposed to make it primer parametric and we're supposed to say that F, which my thing doesn't like at all, is of this type and now we'll probably be okay because we'll know the type and map. Oh, right. Uh, map dot keys dot collect. So gross. Hey, look, I did it again. Whoops, I did it again. <sighs> really? Please collect the positions as a hash set. Cannot borrow, borrow render as mutable. Is it is not declared as mutable. Well, that's probably true. Not really sure why it needed to borrow it as mutable, I guess, because it's a fun mute. Okay. Let's see if we broke anything important. I'm sure we didn't. Nope. Let's see if Clippy's happy with us. I'm sure it is. Yep. Let's not mess with for cargo format for now. We now have render map, which turns out to be exactly what we need. After yesterday's th fiasco when I was working from the wrong directory for a long time, I'm really paranoid about this. So, um, 
what we want to do here is actually So when does it ask for input? It presumably asks for input after what exactly? And we'll just input zeros wherever. Draws tiles, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Joystick that can move left a segment display capable of showing a single number. So I need to break all the blocks. All right. So that code we wrote is going to have to be hacked up so that when there's an input, for now, it will provide zero. Okay, so when we get the ball X, eventually we'll try to move the joystick X under the ball X. For now, let's just leave it in neutral. So we're just gonna go ahead and make our own new loop. No. Do I even want the tile theme I'm here? Or do I just want to go ghetto? It's a fair question. I'll need it later, so let's just do it. Unplay. Mute prog colon hit code. Returns. Oh, for now, it doesn't return anything. It just loops forever. Let's do it. Let's grab this get output body because we're going to need to do something a little bit different on needs input. Um, now, what was jigger input renamed to? Maybe nothing. Nope, it isn't anymore. What is it now called? Day two, just plain old input. Nope, 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 nope. All right, we'll go back and fix day two later. For now, we're just gonna have peek and poke. The abstraction. Um, right. We don't know how big the program is, but I don't think for any of our uses so far we care. Yep. So self dot prog sub adder equals val, and then we'll have peak. And we'll leave the day two stuff alone for now because who cares? Peak. Then 
at an adder returns an i64 and that's just self.prog at adder and it's perfectly fine with my new peek and poke functions so put two quarters in the slot I believe that's what I was supposed to do set it to two to play for free which is interesting because zero is also the starting address of the program so two I'd have to work out what's going on with the it code there but it's super clever um so now we're gonna loop doing this Prog.add input zero, which is supposed to restart the program with that thing there. Um, continue. So there we go. We add a zero to keep the joystick in neutral. Otherwise, we get that. Um, Same dumb thing that I did there. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. I see. Right. Right. For now, we'll just return if we're halted. For here, we'll do that. Then we'll get this and try again. And we need to maintain the map, so we'll make a map there too. If x equals minus one, then print one bang score t and continue. And otherwise, we've got a thing map sub x comma y equals t. Oh, right, we don't have the inverse function. And then render map. Yeah, this, this impl of enum is a mistake. This isn't what I actually want. Um,
and I'll just get an out of bounds error if I don't, if it doesn't work. So I should probably check that first. T is greater or equal to zero, and T is less than render dot len. There we go. Now I got an assertion to check every time through that makes sure that my tile's in range, and now we will, that should be as you size, because of course it should be. And then let's go down here to play, and then render map. and map render comma the default character is a space for places where there aren't things um and then i want to print this there we are we this is the most inefficient render system in the world but it does work and then first I want to print an ANSI escape sequence for clear. And I can never remember. It's escape J, escape H, I don't remember. ANSI escape sequence clear screen. It's almost as though I've looked for it before. Escape 2J, clear screen and home cursor. That's what I want. Escape open bracket. Now I just have to remember how you do this. Escape. Well, escape is ASCII code 27. I feel like backslash U 27 left bracket 2j semicolon. I feel like there's supposed to be a semicolon there somewhere because that's how NC escapes work. Um, I don't think this will build in a million billion years. Let's find out if I'm wrong. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Right. As usual, this kind of nonsense. I could turn the less than around into a greater than, or I could just do Captain Obvious's thing. Oh, right. Standard out. Prog. never speak of it again it thinks that X can't be oh I see yeah so there's no reason for an option here Insert x comma y comma t because I'm really bad at programming. Oh, right. 
is just whining about that. So, what is it? I need the right trait. Yes, I do. Okay. Warning variant is never constructed. Unused standard result that must be used from the flush. That flush should never fail, so we're going to unwrap the living daylights out of it. Okay. That is the end of that story. Yeah, yeah, let's get rid of this dumb enum for now. It's not being used for anything. And I may never use it for anything. Let's just comment it out. If I need it later, I'll use it. If I don't, I won't. I'm really tired of looking at it. Two less than input dot text. Hey, look at that. It's not pretty, and the ball just falls down, and my escape sequence is not correct. Meaning that I don't get a beautiful display, but it looks like the ball just, yeah, comes down out of the screen, maybe? I'm a little confused, because I'm only seeing the ball every other frame. I guess what I want to do is add some tracing so I can figure out what I'm doing. Does play though. Render T, and I still have to put the exclamation point on Printlin, and then we have to figure out. Is it in hex? I don't remember. 1B, probably. Yep. Run that again, please. I want to see what's going on. That seems a little grim. Oh, I see. I'm just scrolling off the top because this doesn't home before it clears the screen. It's the screen's probably just way too big. So excuse my sizes here. Let's try playing it on a much bigger screen. And see if it looks prettier. 
Nope. What the? Oh. Huh. Well, the semicolon is certainly not helping me any. That's pretty clearly not part of anything. And no, this is not home and clear screen, because if it was, it would home and clear screen. All right, so let's play ANSI games. It'll be big fun. Let's get our screen size back down to 80 by 24. We'll make another one later. 80 by 25, 24, 80. There we go. Profiles, big. There we go. No, really. So where was my little ANSI escape sequence thing? Escape screen and home cursor. Escape left bracket 2J. I like this ANSI list. I don't believe in it. Oh, moves left, upper left on DOS. Isn't it escape left bracket H, escape left bracket 2J? I think it kind of is. Yeah, it looks better. So it draws, it renders the whole screen, and then it's just going to update the screen with the thing. The good news is that well, and the other problem, of course, is that the other stuff's getting rendered over the top of when I clear the screen. You can sort of see that. Right. Right. You can sort of see it dropping the ball down on the thing. I think we got victory here, folks. I think we got victory. So now all we got to do is line up the paddle with the ball. And I think all we have to do to line up the paddle with the ball is when the ball is on the screen, we just need to get under it. And presuming it doesn't, which is a big presumption, move any farther left or right, any faster left or right than the paddle. That should just be a matter of get under it and stay under it. So let's see if that's all there is to this little adventure. Could be. Could be the whole story of this game. I wonder why the rendering is so slow. I sort of feel like it's unbelievably slow. Oh, probably. This will take a moment to build. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> God, text rendering is so bad on this thing. Yeah, you can kind of see the ball streaking down. So I just need to get under the ball. So now all that's left is ball tracking. And I refuse. I'm just going to do this. It's just going to stay as a comment. The ball is four, and it's really the only tile I care about is the ball, I think, at least for now. Now, there may be some game of getting stuck in cycles, but if so, I don't sort of understand what it is since the paddle's only one wide. So I'm a little confused. So let's see what we got here. 
So if the T is ball here, play. All right. So we'll start with the paddle in the neutral position. Halt up there will return the score. And so let's deal with that. There we go. We now know the score. Oh, and we need the sign function again from yesterday. So that should go in libaoc for sure. Should have done that a long time ago. Okay. Now we have a sign function. which aren't doing anything anyway. They would have been if I wasn't doing the thing. And here's the secret. If T equals, what was it? The ball, the ball is four. Dern equals, oh, I need the paddle X as well. Whatever the paddle thing is, what's the paddle? The paddle is three. This is gross, and I should go back and fix it later. That, that enum was looking more and more attractive, but let's just go there. Um, then... So the current x, we want to go toward the current x. So if the current x is greater than the paddle x, then I want to increase the paddle x. There we go. If they're 
equal, great. If they're not equal, great. That way we will input the right thing. So we'll have a nice feedback loop here. So I need let mute paddle. And let's see if this still builds. Nope. Score, right, 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 I forgot to. Thank you. It does. Cargo run dash dash release to less than input dot text. Hey, look at that. That's ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. Okay, that was fun. That was truly fun. Let's see if it's the right answer. I'll be kind of shocked if it isn't. Woohoo! Okay. Well, that's a thing that we can do. Um, we did it. We kludged through one of these things, and what I think is pretty record time for me. An hour is the same as some of the other problems, but we got a beautiful display. Let's watch that run again just so that we can uh, appreciate its beauty here. Oh, look at it go. The only thing I would change now is it might have some delay just to make me feel better, I think, at this point. Certainly the rendering. I feel like it should have two modes, a delay mode where the rendering is uh, delayed so you can actually watch it play the game and the uh, speed mode where it doesn't render at all because the rendering is obviously the most expensive part of this process. Uh, I'm pretty pleased. I feel like that went really well. There's obviously still a ton of cleanup to do on this code to make it more rustic and make it more beautiful, but we got our basic thing up and working and running. And along the way, we added some machinery to libaoc that'll be useful in the future, I'm sure. I meant to do the map renderer um, a long time ago, and I really need to go back and do uh, Eh, it feels like there might be one or two other problems that could use that renderer now that I have it. Maybe not. But, oh, right, I was going to change. I don't remember how all this was going to work. It's all so interesting. So, but yeah. Okay, that was Advent of Code 2019, day 13. It turned out to be lucky after all. Who knew? Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you tomorrow night as well. Take care.